Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, the second day of July 2018. First day of the week, second day of July. All right. What are we going to talk about today? We have a lot. It's Monday, so we talk about more than just the usual what's going on out there. And that being said, we'll begin with the first third of July, Tropical Cyclone Points of Origin. And this is a couple of years kind of long in the tooth. Hopefully they will update this soon. Nevertheless, it goes through 2015. And you notice that most of the tropical Atlantic this time of year, pretty quiet. Caribbean Sea almost completely dead. A few areas in July that develop in the Gulf of Mexico and then some in the subtropical areas here off of the southeast Atlantic coast. Most of the activity in the first 10 days of July is confined to the eastern Pacific. And that is, of course, where we have Hurricane Fabio, which we will look at in just a moment. Notice, too, that in the eastern Pacific, most of these storms and hurricanes that do develop don't hit Mexico. Most of them track on out this way. And there is a reason for that. Typically, at this time of year, we see this very large area of high pressure sitting out. Over the west, a lot of people refer to this as the Sonoran Ridge or the Sonoran Heat Ridge, and it keeps these systems generally moving to the west without turning north towards Mexico, the Baja, Southern California with remnant moisture, etc., and then keeping the desert southwest pretty dry. It's not until August and September that we start to see that pattern change, just to kind of put it all into perspective for you. All right, the Southern Oscillation Index has definitely come down in recent weeks and now is in negative territory, generally speaking. Uh, if we go back up here and look at these different index values, the 30-day is you know pretty close to negative 6. The 90-day is pretty close to negative 1. And today's contributor is a measly almost 2. Uh, June ended up actually minus 6, which is pretty close to the El Nino threshold that the Bureau of Meteorology uses. They, they say you're usually about minus 7 to plus 7 are your extremes for El Nino and La Nina, respectively. And it's those long-term patterns, the consistent negative or the consistent positive, that gives you these changes in the state of the ENSO or the El Nino Southern Oscillation. So now that we are generally in the negative realm, the pressure pattern is such that it is generally fostering this idea of an El Nino where the uh, trade winds out here are not as strong coming across this way and that's allowing for uh, the water to warm abnormally so along the equatorial region I mean, you can really see that here, close to the Galapagos Islands. Not so much along the coast of Peru and what we call the Nino 1-2 area. This is divided up almost like Venn diagrams into different Nino regions. And we may talk about that in more detail as this progresses. It's not officially an El Nino yet, just to be clear. But the atmosphere and the ocean seem to be conspiring to produce a warm event for the remaining part of 2018 and probably into next year as well. In the Atlantic, the main development region through here, still fairly cool overall. It's warmed up from where it was a few weeks ago, but I don't think it's going to catch up to the point where we have to worry about it too much in terms of being above average. That being said, again, make no mistake, all of this region out here will be 80 degrees or higher Fahrenheit by the time we get to the latter part of August. It's just the anomalies right now, the departure from normal, and in this case, the blues below normal are really grabbing the spotlight. And as such, Dr. Phil Klotzbach and his group at Colorado State University now calling for a below average hurricane season with only four hurricanes predicted for the entire year. Now, where are those four going to form and where will they hit? Well, that's a big question mark. I don't know. He doesn't know. Nobody knows. And there could be more than four. There could be zero. So what we're going to have to do, there probably won't be zero, but hey, who knows? Wouldn't that be something? You go from last year to zero this year. Um, who knows, right? Uh, not even going to go there. Stranger things, right? So what we need to do is think about, okay, not a very big productive season, probably. 
So when we do have something form, where is it going to go and who is it going to impact when it gets there and how so? And that's what our focus will be on. That's what it's usually on, but last year they were just, you know, we had Harvey, then you had Irma, Jose, Maria, uh, then you had Nate later on, and there was just this clustering over about a six-week period. That could happen again. You never know. 2002 was a very busy September, as an example, uh, and so we'll see. You know, it's going to be a quiet month, I think, but then in August and September, as the main development region here just gets warmer naturally, whether or not it's, you know, one way or the other, this side of normal, we'll just wait and see. All right, let's move along here. Actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, 29 Celsius or higher all along this area that I have outlined. Plenty, plenty warm, and that actually does correlate to this area right here where we have positive anomalies. It's warmer than it should be. Also notice that's the case off of the entire east coast here, all the way up from Florida to the Gulf of Maine. Everything is warmer than average, and if we look at the actual temperatures, this kind of worries me a little bit. We're seeing 29 degrees Celsius uh, temperatures starting to show up here fairly far to the north. And even here, this is the 26C line, 79.5 Fahrenheit, rounded up to 80, if you will. And yeah, it's just July 2nd. Uh, we have a ways to go, and this will continue to warm overall. And, you know, it's button up against the coastline pretty close. So if we get a hurricane coming up this way, you don't have to have Irma's and Maria's and whatever to cause big, big problems, especially for these big population areas. So maybe the islands get a much-deserved break this year, but then we have to see, do we get something that develops close enough to land uh, to obviously warrant concern, and then it comes up the coast or you know something like this? I'm just making examples. You remember Katrina only gave us five total days in its lifespan. Different season entirely, but the short-fused, what people call homegrown systems, yes, I think that's what we're going to have to watch out for more. But I'm not completely convinced of that just yet. This is a large area. This is the last I'll say of it. This is a large area for something to develop, and it's not like these water temperatures in here are in the 50s and some weird climatic change has happened that nobody can explain and blah, 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 blah. And add to that, we do have these very strong tropical waves that have been coming off. And so I'm not discounting what Dr. Klotzbach said, but it's a forecast. It is subject to being wrong on a lot of different levels. And he knows that. And so we just have to be vigilant and not just completely discount something as I also do not hype things that do not need to be hyped. You don't want to hype that there's not going to be a hurricane season because some people will literally turn their back on it and they just, okay, whatever. And then, huh, where'd that hurricane come from? All right, speaking of hurricanes, we'll get to the Gulf in just a moment. First in the Pacific, Fabio, not Fabian. I called it Fabian the other day. My apologies to Fabian. Uh, hurricane now going to be a major hurricane probably. But check this out. Come on. What an amazing small cone of uncertainty, as it's called. Uh, it obviously, it goes out to five days here, but look at the error cone and how narrow it is. You saw the guidance envelope that I was showing you the last day or so, right? Remember how tight that guidance was packed? Well, there you go. Now the error cone is nice and small. That's really, really amazing and a testament to the technology and the tools that we have at hand. So uh, Fabio will not be an issue for any land areas, luckily. It may bring some swells up to Southern California. So you folks <clears throat> in uh, you know, the typical break points out there uh, in Southern Cal, get your surfboards ready. You know the sites to check for that. I'm just giving you a heads up. You might have some decent swells coming your way. So what is this all about? This is an area in the Gulf, a surface trough a little area of convergence along the surface, roughly. Lower pressure, so the air is coming together and rising. And voila, you get this. And 10% uh, chance of development over the next few days. Now, here's an example of what I'm talking about. This probably won't become a wind machine, i.e., not a depression, not a storm, not a hurricane. 
one way to look at this, 90% chance this won't develop into a named wind machine. Okay, that being said, it's already a water machine, and we're going to take a look at that in a moment in more detail. Look at all the convection with it. Most of that's out over the water, but hey, there are people out over the water, boaters, the oil industry with its platforms, etc., uh, you know, the fishing industry, shrimping, you name it. They're out over the water, so it matters. Does it matter that it doesn't have a name? Well, the August 2016 system didn't have a name, and it rode along the interior portions here. And you remember what happened in Louisiana. I know that if you live there, you do. You're still recovering in many areas. So impact, people. It's about the impact, and this is going to bring a lot of rainfall. Quickly looking at the wide shot. I love this from Tropical Tidbits. Thank you, Mr. Cowan. We appreciate it. Fabio wrapping up pretty good. Probably going to be a major hurricane. Probably going to go off in this direction following Daniel. And then there's our disturbance here in the northern Gulf. Upper level energy here. And that's creating some showers and thunderstorms on the southeast side of it. No big deal coming from that. Surface pressures out here are going to be pretty high as the overall pattern throughout the Atlantic and the subtropics. Well, both the tropics and the subtropics, just not favorable right now. Again, typical for July. That being said, we do have a tropical wave here. So our friends down here in the islands, you might have a passing shower, but that's about it. Nothing in the long-range guidance to suggest anything to worry about. A close-up shot of the disturbance in the northern gulf. All right, now here's my point. It is what? July 4th holiday week. We have a large weather system. It doesn't have a name. It's not barrel. It's not whatever. Tropical depression, whatever. It's not hurricane, whatever. It is a large rain machine right now over, I just showed you, 29, 30 degrees Celsius water. Lots and lots of energy for this system. Thunderstorms in the southeast part of Louisiana from some of these squalls. Uh, yeah, there's low pressure in here, but just because it doesn't have a name or an eye or making the front page of the paper, and that's the sad thing. They usually don't until the floods happen, right, with these systems. That doesn't mean you don't pay attention to it. So a lot of people are going to be coming down from the areas off the map up here, the interior portion of the Deep South, to where? The coast for the weekend. The weekend. It's like a weekend. All the travel that's going to be going on through here. People need to be very, very careful as they travel across the I-10 corridor all throughout this region. Uh, it's going to end up over in Houston in vicinity. Maybe it'll rain out the fireworks Wednesday. Maybe your dog will appreciate that. But then, of course, they'll just do the fireworks Thursday or Friday, won't they? So keep an eye on this, mainly because of the rainmaker. Five, ten inches of rain. Wouldn't surprise me if somebody got 15 inches of rain. Uh, the precipitable water forecast, yeah, you know, that's a possibility. So please be careful if you're traveling Slow down, take it easy, we want you back. We want you alive, we want you around to see those four hurricanes that are forecast and see where they end up. But just trying my best here. All right, uh, the radar, come on, go, there we go. Uh, this too, you know, look, there you go. Down here in the uh, Gulf Coast area, this is off of, whoops, I made it go backwards. How did I make it go backwards? That's so funny. All right, go. <laughs> I made my own radar loop go backwards. This is off our site. And, uh, yeah, you can make it go back and forth if you want to. Uh, it's a, what is that, 30 frames? I made this about 10 years ago, believe it or not, with our coding guy, Jason. And um, that's a lot of heavy rain falling down there along the toe of Louisiana. Most of the Mississippi coast pretty clear for the most part. Once you get over here close to the border area along the Pearl River in vicinity, Yep, you got to be careful at that interchange as I-10 and 59, etc., 12 over there, all that. Be real mindful of that. And this is lurking just offshore. So just an example, all right? Be careful, be careful, be careful. So over the next several days, I'm going to do something that I rarely do just to kind of prove a point. This is 384 hours of animation at the 850 millibar level. And you notice big old Bermuda High sitting out here few pulses coming off Africa, little system there, but nothing at all that is round and dense with vorticity, all right? None of the telltale signatures over the next 14, 16 days, 
of anything developing in the deep tropics or in the subtropics. you got these mid-latitude storms up here going by in the jet stream, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about down here, and you can see as well as I can, you got a few pulses of energy that come off of Africa and move west, but that's about it. Even our Gulf system right over there really doesn't amount to much as a wind machine, but you bet it could become quite a water machine. It already is. And once it moves on land, it could be even more so. That's a curious little thing at the beginning. We'll wait for this to recycle. Maybe a weak kind of hybrid kind of system trying to develop out of this mess over the next few days. Watch it here as we go through the hours, days two, three, four, five, etc. There it is. Small, weak, and then off it goes around the periphery of our good friend, the Bermuda High. So I'm not taking the next month off or anything or the next two weeks. But I won't be here tomorrow, and I won't be here Thursday. I've got traveling to do with family, uh, heading to Shackelford Banks. It's a good area. You've got wild horses out there. Going to go tame me one and bring it back. I'm nah, just kidding. Um, probably illegal to do that, isn't it? But, yeah, going to Shackelford Banks with the family tomorrow, then to Raleigh on Thursday uh, to pick up my daughter for a break from the North Carolina Governor's School. So I will be out Tuesday and Thursday if something anomalous pops up i'll bring the ipad i'll bring the iphone whatever and we have connectivity and you bet i'll i'll jump on and we'll talk about something but uh also you know come on follow on twitter because i can post anything anytime anywhere on twitter and you know even youtube has that neat little community post that i can do so if you're a subscriber to the channel make sure you have notifications turned on and i can post a text message you know or a paragraph for that matter and uh, I don't foresee that happening, but just in case. And, of course, if you're on Patreon and one of our supporters there, same thing. And I really like their interface. Their app is amazing. I can do little 15-second videos and pictures and whatever else. It's really a neat world that we live in. So, anyway, I will be out tomorrow and Thursday. But don't worry. Hey, the leaf blower is going outside. I better hurry. Uh, the tropics will behave themselves, hopefully. All righty. That is it for me for today. I am Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back with you. With you, I'll be back with more on Wednesday.